Okay, Paul, you wanted to know how you could set up a particular survey element so that it looked like this one right here. And um, so what I did is I set one up and let me see where the end result is. Here is the end result that I did with inside of uh, ClickFunnels. So let me show you how I did this. What we'll do is we'll just rebuild the whole thing. So we're going to start off by adding a new section and we're going to make that, I think I used a wide section. Let's just pull this in here and we'll find out real quick. And nope, that's not right. So let's go into the settings for it and we will make it a medium with the section. We're going to make it a white background and then let's see, I think we went into the settings here. I think I had 15 on the border, on the edges, and then I did like a 40% drop shadow on it. So here we got our section all set up. Inside of there, we have two rows. One is two column, one is one column. So we'll come in and we'll drop in a two column row up top. And on the left-hand side, as you can see, we just simply have an image element in here. Just, again, mocking up what they did on the other site. And then at the top, we're going to throw in a headline element. And then below that, we're going to drop in a uh, paragraph element. So we'll do that. Let's slide this over. Make that headline look a little bit bigger, better, I mean, and then let's just uh, left justify this. So there we go. We got that all in. We got our corners, the whole thing. Now let's make our bottom row. So we're going to come in, click the plus sign, and we're going to drop in a one column row. And then we have to decide what is this background color. So let's go back to the original and we're going to right click. We're going to inspect on this and we're going to find out what is the background color of this survey box. They're calling it right there. Here is the color. Best way to copy this. You just come in, click on that, copies the color out for you. And we'll come back into our survey and for some reason that popped up top. So we'll put it down to the bottom and now we will change that background color to that blue. So we'll just wipe this out, paste that in. And now we have our blue background color. Now we got to get it to come all the way out to the edge. So let's come back into the settings on it and we will take those settings down I'm pretty sure we take them down to zero if I recall, but here, let me click this out. I don't need that open and we'll get it so I can see my screen a little bit better. Nope, that's not it. What am I thinking here? Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to go into the section. That's where I need to go. And while we're in here, let's just push this down a little bit so we're not jammed up against the top. And here we need to get rid of all the bottom padding and the left and right padding, we bring that down to zero as well. The top we will leave alone. And then what we need to do is come back into our section and we need to round off these corners. Otherwise, they're going to still be square and sticking outside and we just need the bottom only. So there we go. We have our two rows set up and let me turn my timer off. And so now what, all we have to do is the rest of this here is just a survey element. So we're going to jump into the survey element and we'll come down. Survey element is right there. And for starters, uh, one thing you're going to see is there is a bar here, which will slide along as, as people go from question to question. We're going to remove that. We're going to put in a sub headline. And then we're going to set up these buttons so they are side by side instead of stacked on top of each other. And we also have to get rid of the radio buttons as well. So we're going to come in. We're going to start off by clicking on edit the survey options. And we'll come into settings for starters and we will turn off that progress bar so we don't need that anymore. Then we will come into our question and all it said there was question number one, um, question one colon. I think it was all capitalized, but we don't need that. And our two responses were yes and no. That's all we needed to know there. And our sub headline, what did that say? Let's copy this out exactly. 
do you have cravings? Okay, we will copy that out and we will put in our subheadline there. So we don't have any thumbnails, so that can be left as text only. Uh, vertical list, what we need here is a two by two list. So you're gonna have, th that's what makes them side by each, whereas right here, the vertical list will not do that. So we got a vertical two by two list. And then the circle, we want actually to get rid of the radio icon completely, so we're just going to hide that. Now let's uh, click out of here. We got to go back into it. And then we're going to go to advanced. And we want all of our text to be aligned. We want our sub headline to be a little bit larger. And you're going to see right here actually picked up the CSS. I should have should have thought of that. It's already picking up the CSS, but we'll turn that off and then go into what that's going to look like. And otherwise, all the rest of this you don't need at this point. So let me go in. And let me turn off all the CSS just because you'll see, because otherwise, I mean, we basically already solved the problem. But what you're going to have is it's going to look like this, where you're going to have no color, no padding, no um, anything involved. So let's go back into the original and we will kill this off. And oops, let's turn that off too. So what we want to do is we want to right click on that button that they have existing. And we have to look at a couple of things. One is the background color. So here we can come in and we can pick out our background color. And then a couple other things. They had this really cool box shadow. I'm going to turn off the box shadow and look what the buttons do. So it's pretty complicated box shadow. So I just pulled the CSS straight out of here and put in that box shadow. But the biggest problem you're going to run into if you've got none of the CSS turned on is that, again, I will inspect this element, is getting these things to line up properly. So let's go in here and give it a second to pull up. So you got your survey radio option text. That's the main thing we want to look at. And so one of the issues we have to do is we have it floating to the left and we want to turn that off. And I'll show you the whole thing here in a minute. And then up here where it says survey radio option, we also have something here known as display flex. And we want to change that to display block. And so we will change that. And I think, oops, what just happened here? Uh, jumped out of there for some reason. Let's go back into the elements. Come on. There we go. And so after playing around with it a little bit, um, I came up with a bunch of CSS. So I'll just show you what that looks like and explain it as we go. So here we had the survey radio option display block that had been where it said display flex before. So we changed that. Background color on hover is transparent because Inside of the survey element itself, when you hover over it, you got like five or six different color options for hover, but we don't want any color at all. So I turned that off. So if you want some sort of a hover effect, you'd have to come back in and change that. And in fact, if we if we take, no, let's leave that as is. Let's, uh, if we come in here, oops, let's come into a live site. Let's save this first. What's going to happen is the hover effect actually is much bigger than the button itself. So if we come in here and hover over this now, you can see how big this is. It's actually bigger than the button that we create. So if you're going to do a hover effect, you're going to probably want to do it inside of the this element right here. So you'd want to hover on the survey radio option text, not on the survey radio option. But so then we come in here and we want to go text align center. So what that does is that will line up the yes and the no buttons right in the middle of the element themselves. We tell it to no longer float to the left. This is the background color. I gave it a little bit of padding on the top and the bottom just to make it a little bit taller. Put a little border radius on the corners of 10 pixels. And then we did that box shadow that I just swiped straight out of the other guy's code. We got a uh, font weight of bold width of 90% because we don't go 90% then they're buttoned up next to each other. And then I put uh, 20 pixels of left margin in there just to be able to push them apart a little bit. And so that's it for the code. Let me just uh, turn all this code back on. 
so you can see what it looks like. I can't get to that because I was in the way. And then let's jump out of here. We will save. And we will come back, reload the page. And everything should be all lined up nice and neat again. And as you, uh, well, actually, hmm. That's actually an interesting effect. I don't think it was doing that down here. No, it wasn't doing that down here. Um, so here it's doing that, just kind of lightly changing the color of the yes and the no, which that was okay, but this is equally as cool. So I'll have to do a little experiment to see what I got set here differently uh, versus this other one, but either either effect that you come up with will be fine. So that's it. Hope that answered your questions. Okay, just a quick update on a couple issues I walked away from on the last one here. First one was um, our issue here of why this is doing that versus what it's doing over here. And that's actually a setting inside of ClickFunnels itself. And then I also discovered as I was looking at this after I made the last recording that there's actually two lines in the CSS that I talked about in the video that aren't necessary. When I originally was testing this, I didn't have the two buttons set as vertical two by two. And so that's why I had to put in a couple of lines of CSS, but now I've realized they don't need to be in there. So the first one is here where it says survey radio option display block. That doesn't need to be in there at all. And right here where we say float none, that won't have to be in there either. The really important line is the text align center, because if you don't have that in there, you can see right down here at the bottom how the yes and the no slid all the way over to the left-hand side. So the text align center definitely has to be in there. Everything else in here is really just about how the button itself looks. So we jump out of here and we go into our survey element again, and we come over to advanced settings, come all the way down to the bottom. What it is here, the difference between how these two were acting was whether or not I had on the grow and shadow or the default. So the bottom down here I had set to default. So all it does is the text will just kind of fade out a little bit as you hover over it, or it will grow and create a shadow and it grows by like 3% and it drops a shadow around it. Now inside of the CSS, I turned off any, let's uh, close that out, come on. I turned off any background color. So there is no background color set in here. You could, you could change it and you could put in a background color if you wanted to, but what it, all it's doing now then is it's showing that shadow, the box shadow around the outside. So again, we come back in here you can see all this could be a given color, but because of the way we have it set, all it is is showing the shadow and makes it 3% bigger and turns this white. And I actually think that's a pretty slick, um, slick way of doing this, uh, especially versus having a different color be around the background there. So it, it highlights it really well. You have no doubt which one of those buttons you're going to be clicking on. So that's what I wanted to do. Just come back in there and uh, show you a couple of things that I discovered right away uh, before you got off to building this whole thing. So any other questions, let me know.